What do you get when you combine a reclusive, eccentric German author, um, four uh, literary critics who are just completely obsessed with tracking him down um, to no avail, and uh, a bunch of horrible murders by possibly a group of savage, horrible people in Mexico, in a fictional city. I'm not really sure, but it might look something like um, Roberto Belenos 2666, um, the title of which was a mystery up until the end, um, because uh, Beleno himself hinted at it, at that it might be, various people, sources have said that it might be um, the time it took for the, um, out of the exodus of Egypt, and then it took 2,600 or something years, um, and that added up, or maybe it was a, another, uh, uh, in the, I think the afterward, somebody else, um, who translated his work, I believe, um, said that, said that, with some amount of certainty, that Beleno's other book, The Savage Detectives, had a character, um, I'm drawing a blank on, but he said something effective like, meet me at this place in time 26, uh, 2666 years from now. So you get, yeah, you um, some amount, of, but it's still, even still, it's kind of up in the air, and I think it's meant to be like that, because the book itself is a little bit up in the air. Um, Belano himself actually worked on this, uh, was unfinished technically, because he was suffering of heart liver, and, uh, but by the time he did, uh, the... I think the forward in this actually mentions that he was pretty pleased with most of what the draft that came out. So, like, more or less what we're seeing in the end product here, um, with all, you know, the, its fragmented narratives, all the literary references, the kind of oblique, kind of, um, tons of violence kind of references, and just straight out kind of instances of that violence happening in the novel. Um, even my characters, you wouldn't otherwise expect it from. There's some sense that this is a finished product. Um, now, that doesn't to say that I necessarily agree or nice or have enjoyed necessarily the whole entire book. It's not quite an enjoyable book, I'd say. Um, and this is coming from somebody who's read Kafka and says that Kafka for me is like, you know, while not enjoyable, like I'm not like on a, I'm not like on a cloud nine reading Kafka or Dostoevsky or, you know, um, Thomas Mann, especially with like Dr. Faustus, were like very depressing books that you know deal with mental illness. But I do, um, there's something I glean from it, and there's some I feel like there's like at the end of it, it's like you get a payoff, and I don't feel like there's much of a payoff with this, but I'm gonna get to that. Um, so 2666 revolves around um, a man by the name of an author who goes by the name, the pen name Archimboldi, um, and he's very um so this book is it's divided into four parts of uh, five parts um the first part is the part about the critics um the second part is the literally these are literally the names like the part about and then uh the part about am uh amal fatino amal fatino uh the part about fate the part about the crimes and then the last part the part about archibaldi so um archibaldi right Arch yeah um who mysteriously lifted his name from another uh, a, uh, an Italian painter um, in order to kind of like protect his ident identity because he wanted to keep an air of mystery around him on purpose. So, yeah, um, part about the critics concerns these four literary critics whose entire careers now are hinged on Archimbaldi's work. They're all like go to seminars and they, they teach seminars and they're all kind of, you know, in cahoots with one another, and they both kind of are in in the know of like what Archibald might be up to, and they're trying to get an actual interview. And by now, I think all of them pretty much know that he was born in Prussia. You know, he's a German slash Austrian guy. You know, he's by nationality. He's not, you know, that the, the Italian name suggests uh, that he is. But a lot of them, they're they're still very much um, enamored by. They want to figure out like where he is, and then every time they try to get him hold of him like he's like leaves a city or like he i thought this was pretty funny um it's probably the funniest section of the book probably the driest comedy because it's a really take on i think the maybe in the same way nabokov talked about pale fire um that these critics it's like take on the form formula and the medium of literary criticism and like how limited it is like it's these people have devoted so much of their time to this author 
and they're like created this great air of you know legend it's like oh this he's the greatest and yet at the same time they can't even get a conversation with him and it's like it kind of just <laughs> um you know he won't even give them five minutes and maybe for good reasons but like they practically worship the ground he worships on it's maybe talking about the um the downfalls of like maybe obsessing over singularly you know i mean you have to have some people in the air of like in humanity's literature who who's like the you know mad cat you know the the person who uh devotes a lot of time to just one subject you know to one thing so you know you have that's why we have so many people who faithfully have translated other works and authors and who have um been very assiduous and we thank them for that kind of assiduous but there's also a kind of end you know a downfall to all that kind of you know obsequiousness i suppose um so yeah they end up basically um and then you get another instance in violence too like like the the cab driver i think there's a scene where they're being kind of uh escorted to a somewhere i don't know they're all there's there's also like a, a a love affairs going on there's like a bit of a love triangle thing going on too the literary critics there's one of them named liz norton who's um, and it, I think she's British, I think, and then the rest of them are kind of, um, the, their names are, um, Pelliette, the Mordini, and then Espinosa. So they all, yeah, they all kind of get involved with one another. Uh, I think it's, it's, I don't know if that's a love, tr love square. Um, but yeah, something like that. Like, it's a, um, or at least I think all of them do. It's, it seemed like it because they're just like all oh, like and then and then Liz Norton st spent the night with this guy and then he spent the night with the other guy. It's like kind of hard to keep track. Um, but anyway, so they end up not being able to find Archibaldi, but they do hear by kind of word of mouth that he may be in the fictional Mexican city of uh, Santa Teresa, which is um, becomes like a very important place in coming down in the novel. So the next part is the part about Al Malfatino, and uh, Al Malfatino is this um, professor. Um, I believe he teaches like philosophy or um, or language or something related to that. And he's very, um, his he has a quite a chaotic, maybe not chaotic, but a interesting background. Like he's like born in Chile, but he migrated over to Barcelona, and then he goes back to Mexico, so it's, like, a kind of thing that actually kind of resembles Bolano's own life, maybe. Um, you get, like, a bit of the, a bit of a, not a spitting image, but a slight reflection of the author's own kind of upbringing and how, you know, um, Bolano was born in Chile, somewhere in Chile, um, but due to unrest, I believe, he moved and then, uh, to just, just escape, and then he, I think, went to Mexico, I think, and then Mexico turned out to not to be much any better, maybe worse, and then he, uh, at least at the time, and then he moved, I think, and then went to uh, Spain, I think, or Spain, or somewhere in Europe, I think, uh, more in the EU, where he could kind of lay low, and then he found, I think he married somebody from there, like a Spanish person or anything, and then from there, that's when he kind of devoted most, because he started off as a poet, I believe, and then ended up um, finding out that he couldn't really pay the bills with that, so he ended up working, cutting his way, and then he made his, a, a novel named The Savage Detectives, which I've yet to read. The only thing I've read, actually, is um, Cowboy, Gra Cowboy Graves, uh, before, you know, I read this, obviously, but, um, yeah, um, so Admiral you know, Fatino, there's definitely some interest, some interesting things there, like he has a, um, you know, has a single, I think he's a single father to this girl, Rosa, um, and then he tries to find a safe haven somewhere in Mexico, or no, not Mexico, but, um, no, that, yeah, they end up back in, I think, in Sonora, or Mexico, but Santa Teresa shows up again as, like, the city where they're trying to go back, um, and there's some interesting kind of sidelines, like, a lot of, like, these stories here, like, you'll see, like, it seems to be on the surface about, oh, it's the part about the critics, right, and it's like, okay, well, maybe so, but the, you know, like, the part about Amalfatino, like, it's like, yeah, sure, but then you see that there's all these other kind of sidelines, uh, di not really divergent, but definitely um, interconnected to some extent, um, but uh, maybe not necessarily entirely pertinent to what, you know, so, um, but it's like, you know, you're, it's like the equivalent of, like, coming across somebody on a train station and hearing about, like, their story, and then a story within a story within a story, kind of, like, you're just, like, hearing about secondhand events, um, 
And yeah, you hear about like, you know, you look with um one I think painter character who's um mentioned as having uh amputated one of his hands to in order because he's been been so viewed he's been so um almost like fetishized uh, for lack of a better word for his artistic for the suffering and everything like the we've all taken this kind of van gogh i think Boleyn is really onto something here because um we've all taken to this kind of image of the artist as necessary to suffer like they have to feel pain and they have to almost be self-flagellating in a way to be self-denying and to just you know um in in that you see kind of a comical semi-comical look into how artists like he goes to this extreme of being like okay well i'm going i'm just going to logical conclusion i guess you say suicide is but like with this it's like a different you know like he does it and then he actually isn't able to paint in the same way but it's like he kind of immerses he creates himself as the spectacle is both the art and the artist i guess so it's like an interesting kind of thing um but yeah so and then the part about fate um the part about this follows the titular um oscar fate who is this new york city harlem sports journalist who i think he um works with something to do with sports and he's kind of feeling like he's reaching a bit of a almost a midlife crisis the the way that this was written like was like seemed to be a bit different like it seems like um a lot of these have take on different styles like like they're coming from a different point of view almost so um but the part you know about fate is like he's at you know, somebody he's, he's probably about middle aged i think oscar fate and he's trying to um, cover this one fight in Mexico, and then he gets, like, kind of, gets a fare from his job, to, you know, to kind of, you know, go over, you know, they request him to go off there to Mexico, and then he, at first it's, like, about him covering these fights, like, this kind of, like, bare-knuckle boxing kind of fights, like, very just, like, um, like, indelicate, very just, like, old-fashioned pugilists, like, just, like, not... Like, the way that he describes it, like, is very graphic, too. Like, that's why I'm, I'd like to, that's why I say that this is not an enjoyable read, because there are parts where you hear about, like, the cracking of, like, like, skulls and, again, like, the slight, like, brain damage people get from fighting. And then it's just very unabashed in portraying that side of um, the sport and a lot. And then he eventually gets, like, sidelined, because there's this um, lady, a uh, Mexican lady, um who um is kind of controls and uh convinces him to at least think about covering and to looking into this kind of um mystery a very tragic mystery of like all these mexican ladies that have been um abducted and killed and slaughtered consecutively about 120 to 200 i think there's 200 something i think was it like between 100 to 200 something um of, di of just all these different people, just like, like late, all of, I think all of them were women. Maybe there's like one or two males, but yeah, very, just like a very violent, horrible, appalling crime rate just going on here. And, and it's just like, you know, um, from there, it's like, it segues into the part about the crimes. And the part about the crimes is probably my least favorite, um, because at least with the part of fate, there's like, you know, so, uh, interesting things and like more kind of literary kind of things like, mentions like even if it's just uh, a reference to um but i i like did like this uh the character of the drugstore owner i forget his name but he was i think he was in mexico the drugstore owner who um is like really well versed in books and is like a fanatic and then talks about like you know which one is better kafka's um the trial or i think he says that is it like the trial or is it bartleby the scrivener and he's like talks about like is it that or you know moby dick or um, but Moby Dick or Bottle the Scrivener, I think. And then he speaks two Kafka ones, and it's basically, like, the shorter... He talks about there being, like, the shorter um, ones were, like, maybe easier to read through and maybe easier to digest, but it was actually worth it to go with the long haul kind of bigger Mo Moby Dick novels. And in a way, this nine... At 900 pages, this um, Bolanos, um 2666 is, like, kind of in that territory. Um of you know just whopping literature with like lots of thematic and just like wide reaching stuff uh subject matter so yeah I, I did like that part but the part about the crimes is just so 
the issue I have with it is that it's like, it just goes from one thing to the next. It's just like, describes in graphic detail, of course, um, which you're kind of primed for, I guess, but like, just like, uh, you know, this, the murders of these women, and it's like, it goes on for like 100 pages-ish. Um, I could be exaggerating, so just don't take my word for that, but um, I did, you know, like, it will just like, kept going to this thing of like, you know, describing it as if, <laughs> Like, just, like, describing horrible, sordid details, just, like, this happened, then this happened, and then this lady was slaughtered horribly, then this lady was slaughtered, um, just, like, horribly, and, and then raped, and then this happened. It's, like, I don't, I don't even know if I want to get into it, but, yeah, um, that part takes, like, a, a, a sizable chunk of just kind of, if you can, in my mind, it's, like, maybe this isn't, like, a good attitude, but, like, in my mind, if you can allude to stuff in literature and rather than making it blatantly, objectively obvious and kind of, you know, and if you can kind of elude that, okay, this many women died, we can, you know, get over that curveball and then kind of get away from that. But I do get that in the sense that he's resuscitating these details because, like, they are repetitive and they're meant to be, and it's meant to be ma maddening and delirious to read these type of things because that's what it's like in real life, isn't it? Like, you pick up the newspaper, hear about another death, hear about Israel and the Hamas and, you know, like another damage control type death involving another, you know, little girl that's like used as, um, cannon fodder. And it's like, it's made out to be, um, basically just kind of, um, ubiquitous and just prevalent at this point. Like, you know, like just, it, it it's people have become numb to these kind of things. And that, I think that's what he's trying to say. But I will say on just a guttural instinctual level, I did not like that part of the novel. Um, other parts were quite nice, though. Um, and then you have the last part, um, the part about Archimbaldi, where he starts to really get into the nitty-gritty details of his life, and, like, the mystery is now unveiled. Um, so you, you have him being uh, written down, recorded as being born in 1920 in Prussia. So he's about, like, maybe in his 70s now. And um, he also had, I think, like, he worked... He was draft... Not drafted, maybe but maybe um, conscripted into the Eastern Front War, I guess, during the, um, I think it was first, was it the, no, Second World War. Yeah, obviously it would have Second World War. Uh, something to do with him, you know. Um, so he's, you know, but at some point he becomes, like, um, kind of in the talks for, like, a Nobel Prize, but I think he loses. Um, and then there's the character of Mr. Bubis, um, who is, um, there's another kind of baroness, can't remember name baroness something zumpa or something like uh, elaborate like that and um yeah they're they're her family is like a kind of prestigious kind of family and they play a good part in his kind of family too and it's like a lot of it's kind of involves like kind of you know like uh like kind of a rambunctious kind of youth from the army and and then kind of aimless but like now he's found literature and he's like and now he's found love and the baron uh the baroness uh and now Basically, yeah, he's, yeah, gets really well kind of connections, and I think that's where he ca that's where he kind of gets. And then one of his brothers, again, this is violence happening again, um, one of his brothers or brothers-in-law, I think, um, I think it was Reiter, I think, is accused of killing a woman, his wife, I think. And he gets, basically, the reason he, Archimbaldi, leaves to go to Mexico, to Santa Teresa, is basically to escape that you know, just to not get involved or wrapped up in it. So that in, um, so in kind of is the gist of 2666 by Roberto Bolano. Um, definitely recommend. Definitely not everybody's cup of tea. Um, I definitely was fighting, like, it was almost like that part about the murders was almost like a deal breaker just because of how long it felt. Like, it, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't as long as it felt, but maybe just for me, I'm, I am maybe a little bit more... Um, thin skins about certain things, like about, uh, certain, certain kind of depictions of violence, so, but I do definitely recommend, aside from that, just, you know, take your time with it, probably, is the best thing, only advice I can really give, and, yeah, um, that's all I have for today, so, thanks for watching.